Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another video. My name is Glasscock. That's my last name. And it's also the name of this YouTube channel. Hope that you guys are doing well today. Today's video is actually going to be about a very hot topic here on this channel, and that is the topic of buffer bloat. More specifically, we're going to be talking about one of the ways that I like to reduce buffer bloat for my home network to improve responsiveness and lower ping and um, you know, the overall connection quality for multiplayer games such as on Xbox, on PS4, on PC, really any device that you are playing games on. Um, this tactic can actually be used. So let's jump right into it. And in case you guys can't tell by the title, we are going to be using what is called bandwidth limiting to reduce buffer bloat here on my home network. And the way bandwidth limiting works is it's really... I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. You're limiting your bandwidth. And the purpose of doing that is you're sacrificing bandwidth overall throughput in hopes that you can improve responsiveness and lower latency or ping. Okay. And by doing that in return, you actually get a lower uh, bloat because you are cutting your uh, overall throughput and leaving overhead so that why packets don't become over queued. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. If you guys want more information, definitely search up on Google what buffer bloat is and what queuing is um, if you're truly interested. But that's really not what we're here to explain today. We're more or less going to be looking at uh, bandwidth limiting and how it affects my home network. So today I'm going to be using uh, the Netgear R7000, or excuse me, not the R7000. I'm going to use the S8000 switch. It is a gaming switch that you can get for your home network that uh, allows you to control traffic and prioritize devices. And it's very, very good if you have a modem two-in-one gateway from your internet provider. And the thing with some of these internet providers is they do not allow you to use your own equipment. It's very unfortunate because if it were my way, AT&T would let me use my own separate modem and I would connect a Netgear XR500 to it. But unfortunately, AT&T forces me to use their uh, Pace 5268AC gateway. Very great piece of equipment, by the way. And um, there's also a lot of internet providers that, um, that use similar equipment, such as Verizon, Frontier Fios, uh, sometimes Comcast. Comcast is actually optional, but they um, they try to push their equipment because I think they charge a fee for it. Um, as well as various other providers, even I, I want to say Google Fiber even has their own gateway. And it's not always a bad thing. It's really that they're trying to ensure that you're not messing anything up. That you know they have access to your equipment at all times, so that way they can troubleshoot and they can guarantee the speeds that they are providing you. Which is kind of ironic because a lot of people don't get those speeds they're paying for, but I digress, completely digress, I got sidetracked. So this is pretty much what my gaming setup looks like. Now I did recently purchase an Xbox One, so you would bloop, you would add an Xbox One there. Um, but this is essentially how it looks. So my uh, internet provider's AT&T, they give me a thousand upload and a thousand download megabits per second. It's a fiber connection. And yes, even with the most powerful, you know, crazy internet speeds, you can still have buffer bloat, especially when your network is under a heavy load or you know the bandwidth is com being completely used up you can uh, suffer from queuing and severe bloat so yeah the speeds really do not matter buffer bloat occurs on any network but they supply me with a fiber connection that comes to my pace 5268ac and what i've done with the pace 5268ac is i have shut off the wi-fi capability 100 percent because i actually do not use uh, the Pace 5268 AC for routing uh, traffic. It, what it really does is it just assigns my IP addresses. So I use it to uh, handle DHCP, which is IP address assignment. But as far as handling traffic, that is all handled by my Netgear S8000 switch. And this is by far the best investment that I've made on my home network. And anybody that has a two-in-one gateway that likes to play games or is really big on lowering their ping, I highly recommend that you buy one of these. It was a huge game changer for me. And I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below where you can check it out on Amazon. It is an affiliate link. So if you guys do decide to purchase uh, using the link, I will get a kickback 
um, from your purchase at no additional charge to you. It's one of the ways you can support the channel if you appreciate my content and my videos. So thank you in advance for that. I appreciate anybody uh, that takes advantage of that. But yeah, what it essentially does is it connects all of my devices to my network without having to use the gateway for routing traffic. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So you're probably wondering, well, since You've disabled Wi-Fi on the 526-80C. How do you connect Wi-Fi devices? Well, I actually have an R7000 router that is set to AP mode, which is called access point mode, which means it's really not acting as a router. It's more or less just taking the IP addresses that the gateway assigns, and it's just sending it off to a wireless device so I don't have to use a wired connection. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now back to the topic of bandwidth limiting. Bandwidth limiting is a very a popular way of controlling bandwidth for different connections, okay? Now I know that TP-Link and uh, ASUS has implemented bandwidth limiting into their routers for quite some time now. Netgear is coming around and allowing you to do that and for quite some time, one of the ways I was lowering buffer bloat on my home network was by using QoS or quality of service, which is the second alternative way uh, for lowering buffer bloat on the home network. So, but today we're talking about bandwidth limiting. It's very popular and very effective as well. Okay, so let's cut the jibber jabber. And now that I've explained how my network setup works, let's go ahead and show this in action. So straight out of the box, this is what everything looks like. We're gonna do a speed test and it's a gigabit fiber connection. By the way, I really like this, um, this uh, dark theme for dslreports.com. You can actually switch it from up here. I did not know that. It may have been there for quite some time, but I just <laughs> I never actually saw it. So it's a gigabit fiber connection, and we're just going to run a test real quick. And what you're going to notice is these are the speeds, and then right here is excess ping over idle, a.k.a. buffer bloat. And what we're gonna notice here is that on the download side, there's really not a lot of queuing or bloat that occurs. But once we go over here to upload speed, what we're seeing is a tremendous amount of bloat that is occurring when our connection is being maxed out on the upload side, okay? So I'm gonna get the grades here in a second and I'm gonna show you guys how I fix this using bandwidth limiting. All right, so very nice D on that buffer bloat. That's great. Overall, we get a B, and quality is A, which is good. So um, one thing that I do like about bandwidth limiting that I'm going to show you guys is uh, you do not have to affect the opposing connection, if that makes any sense. How do I explain this? Well, see, since my buffer bloat is occurring on the upload side, I can actually just apply bandwidth limiting to the upload side and leave the download uh, connection as is. And I will show you how I do that. So my download speeds will not be affected. However, my upload speeds will be compressed. So I'm testing on my Razer Blade Pro, just like I showed you in my setup, I got my four things connected. And I'm gonna go here to my Razer Blade Pro, I'm gonna edit it. And in rate limit, I'm gonna set the, um, I'm gonna set the in rate limit to I'm just going to put it as a 128 megabits per second. So this is going to limit the upload speeds and compress them to, um, you know, better apply uh, queuing for my home network. All right, so we're going to go ahead and apply it here. And we're going to see what changes. All right, so let's go back into DSL reports. We're going to test one more time. And what you guys are gonna notice is the download speeds are going to be completely unchanged because we're not applying any kind of bandwidth limiting to the download speed. So as you can see, we're still getting a good, good throughput here on the download speed. Our buffer bloat is very nice at a very low excess ping over idle. And what we're gonna see is with our upload speed, we have absolutely no 
excess ping over idle whatsoever. And if there is any, it's extremely low. Now, as you can see, our uh, down or excuse me, our upload speeds have been sacrificed, but in exchange, we are gaining better responsiveness and lower ping and lower bloat. Okay. Of course, you can tinker around with this and you can better uh, get it more well optimized. But as you can see, we get A plus, A plus, and A across the board. So buffer bloat went from a D to an A plus. That is a really good, um, <laughs> that's a huge improvement there. Tremendous improvement. I'm actually going to show a DSL report speed test on my PS4. That is something that's been really highly requested. So you guys can watch that now here at the end of the video. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you guys have any questions, you all can always comment down below in the comment section. I do my best to reply to everybody. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you all on the next video. Peace.